it's going to start. Yeah. So, so welcome everyone um, to this brilliant session, Back to Our Roots. I'm really um, excited to um, be working in partnership with Carol Adams from Food Adventure in South Wales um, to bring this to you. Um, and just, um, this is a, a, a network session with Food for Life Get Togethers. Um, so we're kind of thinking, it's a program that really is about building well-being as we build connections to land and each other through how and what we eat, um, how we grow, how we share our food, how we cook it. Um, Carol is um, one of our My Food community alumni uh, and has really helped pull this conversation together, which we hope is just a starting point, actually, for a much richer, deeper conversation around some of these things. Um, and and I hopefully um, the beginning of a, of a network of people that can come together and, and support each other around growing food from a wealth of cultures that are found in, in the UK at the moment. So I'm going to pass it over to Carol um, to, to continue. Um, welcome, everybody. It's so wonderful to see you. Uh, my name is Carol Adams, and um, I manage a social enterprise called Food Adventure Social Enterprise, and I'm based in South Wales. Um, as Andrea mentioned, I'm part of the My Food community, which is hosted by the Soil Association. And um, one of the things about the program is we had this away day in Birmingham, and one of the speakers that you'll meet later today, Eric. Eric and I just happened to find each other at a table and uh, he mentioned to me, oh, he was growing amaranth and huckleberry. A and um, I'm originally from the Bahamas. I moved to Wales about 16 years ago, a little bit about my, my story. And um, I live in a small town um, and one of the things that for my 16 years that I could not find food from my, my culture, things like okra, callaloo, um, in my town, Aberdare, and um, anytime I wanted it, it was a 25 mile drive to Cardiff. Um, and then I had neighbors around me, they're going, oh, you're going to Cardiff? Oh, can you pick up? And, you know, I found myself uh, doing these drives. But at the same time, um, I also manage a network of farmers markets and I'm involved in a local food movement. And I just felt like a kind of a bit of a fraud that a part of me was uh, championing local food. Um, and then another part of me was hopping in my car, driving for 25 miles to buy imported okra. And there are other foods that I couldn't even find. So at this end, with conversations with my work in Cardiff uh, at the farmers markets, as well as other projects that I work on, I realized that there was a sort of demand for, you know, th that there are people that moved to Wales or the UK, they grew back home. Some people didn't know where in Cardiff that they could get food that they missed from home. And people wanted to start to grow. So I'm going to share my screen just to show you a few photos. And sorry, because I'm not. Um, Andrew, can you see the screen? Yeah, it looks good. OK. If you just cycle through here, that'd be fine. Um, so basically, uh, the, the project was born. Um, once I knew that, yes, it could grow, and then that I knew that there were a lot of people who wanted to learn to grow. But one of the challenges was trying to find that lived experience. Who out there could support novice growers, people who had the experience of growing maybe in Barbados or in Tanzania, but couldn't figure out how to grow in this climate? Um, and I see Chris is on this call. Um, uh, and I found someone that could support the group in terms of with expertise in growing um, and but learning with us on the various different crops. So as you can see, I mean, we had to start right from the beginning of you can't just throw seeds in the soil and hope your okra will grow. Um, so just a little bit, uh, a picture here of 
uh, some of the participants and really starting off with our first uh, seedlings. And, you know, the journey for us really was, um, what can we grow? How do we grow? Another challenge is, of course, was where do we grow? There were windowsills, some had greenhouses, some did not. Um, we've got, of course, this uh, gastronomic cost of heating houses. How do you get seedlings going in this, in this climate? And things that we just had to learn about planting, thinning, um, and that joy of the first crop. So we really started from the very beginning. Uh, and this, this picture here, the one that advertised the event, really shows that joy of, oh my goodness, you know, I can grow. So some of the things that we're growing are, you know, traditional, I'll call them traditional British veg or things that we can find here, radishes. This is the first okra coming up. Uh, and that's Jody with her okra and cucumbers. And now that we're in full bloom, we've got mustard green, lettuces, collard greens. Um, but so for us, it was the project really was looking at how do we how do we start to build a network of growers? The challenge was first, how do you build a network of growers so that we could support growers of the future. That was the first challenge, because uh, in part of my food community, I kept asking, who can help? You know, who can help? Who's got this knowledge? And it was really hard to find people with that lived experience of, of growing mustard or growing uh, gungo peas or black eyed peas or growing collards. So that was the first challenge for us to overcome was finding the network of growers with lived experience with these vegetables. Um, our second challenge, and that's for some of the people in the cohort, is finding the spaces to grow. Um, some people might just have a windowsill. That was another challenge, finding spaces. Um, and of course, the third challenge for us is that growing is throughout, it's a, you, you know, and what I'm finding from this cohort is as you're growing, it's a whole season. So someone might come to a workshop on one day, but they might not be able to come the next session. And you really need to support people right from the seeds to, I mean, we've got to learn everything, how to pinch tomatoes, um, you know, every step of the way, how do you build that library of knowledge so that someone from the, the, that first seed to harvest to sharing seeds can learn? Um, and that's where I think our challenges, our, our challenges have, have been. And I think that's one reason why, you know, we're interested in a network so that we've got a bank of people out there that can help throughout the growing season to really build up a network of people with lived experience of growing all of these different vegetables. Um, we've been really lucky to partner with Eric, who you'll hear from a bit later, uh, Kushinga Gardens in Birmingham, where uh, it's been really lovely to um, learn from them. They have some lived experience in, in growing. As I said, you know, we've been able to call on um, uh, Chris, who travels all around the UK supporting community gardens. And hopefully there will be a, a larger bank to come to help other people learn and grow and share. So that's my introduction. And um, Andrew, if you'd like to introduce the next speaker. Um, yes. <laughs> All of a sudden I'm realizing I don't have my list right in front of me. Sorry, I, Tanisha or Eric? Okay, yes, we will have Tanisha um, first and then we'll have Eric round us off. Um, that'd be amazing. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, 
no pressure. <laughs> None at all. <laughs> so I'm Tanisia and um, my husband and I run a skincare brand called Earth to Earth Organics. And that started because when I moved from um, Guyana in South America to England, my skin, my entire body had a reaction to <laughs> the water, the food, the climate, like just everything. Um, and over time that pushed us into a space where we wanted to grow our own food. Um, and things that we found really successful were um, Amaranth is, we find it quite, we found it quite easy to grow it in England. Um, uh, tomatoes and things like the Jamaican pumpkins, things like that were quite um, easy to grow. And only because we were able to get a space in the allotment from um, my husband's mom. So that started off this whole um, discovery of growing in England and the excitement that that, that brings. I mean, the first picking the first pumpkin and holding it like a baby was a true experience for us. Um, and then we eventually moved to Wales. We moved to Wales last year and it's really um, the experience of wanting to grow more ingredients for our products. We really wanted to make sure that if we um, put in sorrel in our bath salts and um, calendula in our bath salts that we can grow that here. Um, and that's the journey we're on now. Um, and it is challenging at points because trying to find the space to grow in um, is not as simple as, um, as you might think. There's a lot more rain in Wales, which is beautiful, but that brings its own challenges. Um, and also being able to grow in different spaces, like Carol said, you know, some things need to be grown indoors. If we really want a beautiful, abundant crop of sorrel, we really need uh, greenhouses, we really need polytunnels, and we need an infrastructure that we need to build from the ground up with supported community groups. Um, and just finding those right spaces and a program like, um, just the one Carl's running and you guys are talking about is really important because we found it difficult in the beginning to learn how to grow the amaranth, where to find the seeds, how to nurture them before they went outside. Um, but because we were a part of that allotment group, you know, we were speaking to the, the guys from Italy who grew their, um, their courgettes and they grew their artichokes. So they could tell us about that. And, you know, the older Jamaican man who had the most beautiful pumpkins we'd ever seen, like he taught us how to nurture the pumpkins and when to put them out and how to save the seed. And, you know, just different things that we might have taken for granted growing food back home because back home you, you know, you have rain and sunshine. That's all we have in Guyana, rain season and sunny season. You put the thing in the ground, it grows quite quickly. You don't have to worry about slugs. There's no rabbits eating your food. <laughs> it's just a completely different um, setup. So when we started doing that, we started saying, oh wait, our customers, they started asking us, wait, how do you do that? So every year now we give customers um, seeds when they order. So this year we are doing uh, pak choy, calendula, um, and we're just giving those to them to make sure that they have a chance to grow it. And we're also doing little videos to show people, look, it's quite simple. You put the seed in the pot, you do it this way, you water it this way. And it's really inspiring to see how it, it just makes them light up when they show us pictures of here's the pak choy we grow, or here's the calendula, or here are the chilies, because every year we do different plants. Um, and that's been really, really good, but I think finding the time and the funding to build and develop programs. I see there are quite a lot of people from community groups or allotment gardens or people who want to do similar programs across the world, across England in the chat. And that's really inspiring to see how many people are on the same sort of journey. And there's definitely a need for that development of programs that help people from the jump, you know, like how do I grow the seed? When does this need to go out? And um, that's what's really needed and I think when we all unite and we come together and we share that lot of resources then it makes it much easier and I think this is a good way to do that um, because it also helps us to build legacy in this country in where we are now um, and even combining that with the plants that naturally grow here like how do we adapt those to our traditional cooking 
how do we make you know like a squash taste like a pumpkin instead of like do curry with that or something like that um and I think sometimes the lingo as well could be a stop block to something like saying um you know speaking to somebody that just came from the Caribbean talking to them about permaculture when actually if you just say well you know how you would set up your garden you know we want to really chop trees down you want to really um dig the ground up and turn it and all of that all of the time um so it's just speaking in, in more um terms that we understand that we are familiar with instead of going in with the the bigger broader subjects of oh this is permaculture and oh this is regenerative when a lot of it is actually stuff that we've always done it's just a different way of talking about it um but in the future what we're looking to do is to help build more programs be part of those co, pro, the co development of these programs and really just spread out and hopefully this season next year because we only get one growing season right so hopefully by this growing season next year we'll have a program and a place where we can all share this knowledge and expand and share seeds and learn how to save seeds and you know because once you save the seeds they adapt to this environment as we all know so that's something exciting as well to do and um yeah that's everything brilliant thank you so much Denise. um thank you Denise. it always yeah. happens i get a delivery in the middle of a zoom call sorry <laughs> Um, oh no, I know I haven't had mine that. Um, so should we go on to Eric? So Eric's another um, Eric's another one of our MFs, like our my food community um, growers, and um, yeah, has a wealth of knowledge um, both here and in Africa. So yeah, Eric. Thank you very much, Andrea, and I I do share the same kind of feeling and experiences Denisia and Carol have shared in terms of asking um, how do we grow what we used to or from where we come from. And that's the experience I've been able to bring on board and to share with the uh, food community in Birmingham, specifically at the Kushinga Community Garden, where I have been working in the past three years. Just permit me share my screen. So it'll be good I, I speak with some pictures. Is, is that all? Oh. Is that possible, Andrea, to do that? I, sorry, I, I, I all right, let's see. Oh, perfect. Um, so can, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yes, perfect. So, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just wanting to share some quick experience about the diversity in Birmingham and how that translates to our food and how we are growing together as, as um, a, a diverse community, which uh, you know, our food systems are, are shaping that, that whole community around the Kushinga Garden. And so um, just quickly, I won't, I won't waste time telling you that, but I'll just quickly speak to it. Um, so I, I coordinate the Kushinga Community Garden and Kuchinga, it's a Shona word, you know, Zimbabwean, which means strength and endurance. And uh, it's about cooperation and collaboration, you know, bringing people from different parts of the world together to be able to, to share their knowledge and experiences, particularly around food. The strong belief is that when, when people migrate, uh, move from one part of the world to another, they often move with their seeds. And so what we found was, you know, these this seeds can actually um, enrich the food community wherever they find themselves, if they are able to grow these seeds. And that's the whole notion behind the Kushinga Gar Community Garden is uh, bringing these people from different parts of the world, refugees, migrant communities, and immersing themselves with the local residents to be able to see how the seeds uh, they bring with them are able to enrich uh, the food community around where we find ourselves. Kushinga for COVID-19 was, was very active, but because of uh, the pandemic, things went slow and there was a complete shutdown. And so when I when I when when I came to Kushinga, I was about finding how do we build back better, how do we get everyone on board again, given that people had been dispersed. Some people had moved away from Birmingham. And so we're looking at how do we together build back as, as a community 
and valuing those those experiences which we come from you know the new residents that have come around the community how do we tap into all those experiences and build back in terms of enriching the food systems we, we had and not only developing that space for the growing of food but as a safe space where we could come together and and grow together so um one of the things we, we we've we've actually been doing is getting you know everyone on board again and trying to uh, define and write write down clear rules of, of engagement between ourselves in terms of you know how do we manage the resources we we mobilized um, the crops we wanted to grow and uh, how do we want to maintain the, the soil of land we, we we had so um, we luckily for us we had we had a space provided by the Bonville Trust and. It was again getting everyone on board deciding exactly how we wanted to use that space, how we wanted to uh, develop the space as a group because we don't have individual allotments, but it's all of us coming together with our knowledge and skills from around the world and sharing that that knowledge. And as as Carol says, it's about you know how do we pull this together so we can build a whole package, a compendium of experiences from all over the world around growing and sharing food and so we've we've benefited from you know experiences from like 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 from chris where he has we've had the opportunity to have him come around and actually throw on us some of his rich experiences in the uk and we're looking at how do we uh, build all of this and hopefully get you know ex a whole compendium across and hopefully chris might be able to tap into all these these things and we would be able to have that that whole uh, a, a, a document or a publication on the experiences across the board where people have come from different parts of the world and are using their experiences and skills to be able to enrich the food community in the UK. And so for us, it was getting people on board to see exactly what they had, what they were interested in doing, and you know, getting everyone bring these things together and we decided, you know, based on the UK context, what window of opportunity existed for us, given that these food, foods came from uh, different contexts, as, as Tanisha says, where the weather is quite favorable, you just throw the seeds out there, look after them just slightly, <laughs> and then you get them growing. But in the UK, we had to find that window of opportunity where it was, it was it, the weather was favorable. How did we grow that and protect our seeds so that we can have that you know, regularly or all, all, all season round? So it was for us more of a try and error and asking questions, getting feedback, networking with others. And Chris has been instrumental, as I say. Sometimes we reach out to him to say, look, the seeds are behaving this way. We, how do we uh, get them to respond to uh, the new environment which they find themselves? And he has been just up to date giving us, oh, you, you need to think about this, you need to think about this. So for us, we again, as I mentioned, it has been finding that window of opportunity. As you can see in the picture, uh, that's huckleberry, which is the main one of the main delicacies of vegetables in Cameroon. And we successfully grew that in Birmingham, uh, given uh, the difference in, as I said, in the weather from where vegetables in Cameroon are grown. And this, when we share these images across the board, you know, people from the context where these vegetables. Uh, a, a staple are surprised to, to, to realize, oh, so we could grow this uh, in a context which is so different from where we are used to. And so it's been a bit of a trial and error on documenting these experiences as we lessons and the shortcomings in terms of engaging in growing exotic vegetables that are not, uh, that were not normally in the UK. So what we've, what we've, we've done at U U Kushinga Gardens, being able to share out this information, get more people on board. And so we've got we've, we've got that growing interest around the things we do. And so we've got so much networking happening. And as I said, we've got Chris and Carol, who at some point actually came over to the garden and we've had all these exchanges and tapping into their experiences and sharing what, what we, we, we also have. And so for us, the Kushinga Garden, it's not, it's not only about growing, uh food together it's, it's also about uh putting young generation along alongside with us so that we've got 
this whole network of not only old growers, but younger growers taking an interest in that. And we've got that responsibility to get them on board and to understand the mistakes we made in terms of looking after our environment, protecting the environment and our well-being. It's also about getting these people together, be able to share the food, to be able to share to share the last year, if I was forced to endure it, would be a level of depression in which I have never. Yeah. So, Sorry, all right, go ahead. That's, that's right. So as I said, it's not only getting together to grow food, but it's, it's also um, tagging this, the younger generation along to be able to transfer this knowledge and experiences to them and share with them the lessons and the shortcomings we had in our own experience. But again, it's also about getting people together around the food we grow, cook that food together and, you know, using the experiences we come from in different parts of the world and sharing that food together as well. So in, in doing this, we've been able to build a community of growers around the Kushinga Garden. And for us, we see lots of hope in the horizon based on the fact that we are able to bring these people from different parts of the world to share these experiences. and. Food for us has been a means of communication. I've got this one experience, which, you know, it's what stood out for me being part of the My Food community with, with Carol, is that um, we've got people coming from different parts of the world, speaking different languages with different experiences. And one thing I discovered was that getting together to grow food, to build a compost bin, was more of communication than the languages we spoke. And so we've been able to build a community of people that are doing things together, growing food together, rather than speaking a language, rather than talking about the difficulties they come, they come with, but focusing on food. And we've been able to get people open up, think about their history, share that with us, and we've been able to build and develop a safe space where everyone feels happy to come along during our work sessions to be able to share about growing and as food and also about growing as a community. I thought that was something I could share with you to be able to stimulate uh, the world's group, which is looking at how do we get together to build a network of growers rather than growing uh, in our individual window seals and in our backyards, but getting together as a network of growers and sharing our knowledge and experiences. Thank you very much. That's amazing. Um, I'm not sure if Carol's on. Um, I'm here. Uh, do you want to um, field questions or? Yes, like... yes. We've got time for a few questions before we have our discussion. Um, so if you can um, raise your physical hand or or raise your zoom hand and there's quite a few of you on the screen or you can type your question in the chat and it's hard there's three pages of people so i'm just scrolling to see if i see any hands okay. uh, i'll keep an eye in the chat for you there's one okay. um about where to buy seeds for some of the food mentioned like amaranth so um, I found several sources for, for, for seeds in this journey. So one of them is, um, what are they called? Organic gardening. Another is through, you know, each nation has like a real seed. So I know there's like a real seed Wales. There's one for Scotland. Um, but yeah, I mean, for, for us, um, and yeah, thank you. Garden Organic, that's them. And um, uh, uh, various different catalogs like Chiltern Seeds as well. But it has taken, um, and so I've been, yeah, those are the three main ones that I've used for what uh, people have wanted. There are some seeds that I have not been able to find yet. That doesn't mean they're not there. It's just, I didn't find them in time for the growing season. Um, there's one called uh, Premier Seeds Direct as well. Uh, Jekka's Herb is another one. 
Um, and there's there's different ones, just like Real Seeds, who um, save seeds in different communities. Yes. So yeah, Real Seeds is a good one for Wales. I think that's the one nice thing if we have a network is I'm sure people will be able to share where they're getting their uh, their seeds from as well, as well as swap seeds. Seed libraries have a great variety. London Freedom Seed Bank, thank you. Uh, are there any groups running online um, we can join to keep in touch easily? That's coming. Uh, as part of today, we're gonna to just talk about some different options. <laughs> I am Colette from Garden Organic here. Thank you, yep. Uh, as a matter of fact, Colette, uh, I'm in the Amaranth trial that you have going right now, uh, which is really great. Um, one of the things that Garden Organic is doing is they're trialing different vegetables for climate change. And this year happens to be amaranth or callaloo. Um, so Colette, really nice to meet you. And I'm praying that my, my, my trial goes well. <laughs> Can't wait to see the results. Heritage Seed Library, okay. My question was around the foods you grow. Were you focused on anyone who came along and the foods they were interested in? Or did you start with a focus on Bahamian Caribbean foods? We're starting some small projects in Glasgow for allotments for asylum seekers, refugees, and a Malawian woman has started a growing project too called Zamunda. She is growing amaranth, bean leaves, pumpkin leaves, is there any way of linking in with any national initiatives? I would be interested. I think that's one of the objectives of today is to start to link people. When, uh, when people registered for our project, we asked them what they wanted to grow um, because I mean, I knew what I was interested in, but we had people, you know, like I mentioned from uh, Tanzania, from Kenya, from Uganda, so we basically asked people what they wanted to grow, and then that's how we started. Um, and the other thing that was really interesting is like, I call it collard greens, and then realized, but in Tanzania, it's called, pardon me, I think it's Sukuma Wiki. So, you know, through the process, it was, so during the, the, the class, it was like, oh, that's what collard greens are. So it's very interesting as well. Um, you know, amaranth for me is callaloo, that language of what is what is what, because um, so, you know, the Tanzanian lady in our group, she didn't tick the box for collard greens until she realized it was Tsukima Wiki, and then I quickly got her some seeds so that she could grow some. Okay, um, and yeah, we'll talk about the space. Sometimes spices from shops will grow. Do you have a resource website center for seeds info contacts? Watch this space because I think everybody's got information and um, that's what we are wondering. Save seeds, yes. Oh, had some success with Taro from a shop. Someone just put a link in from Liverpool. Wow, there's a lot in the chat. Someone, uh, D has uh, grown amaranth, great. Any other questions before we move on to the discussion? So we only got, matter of fact, we should move on, Andrea, just notice the time. Thank you, yeah. everyone, this is only the beginning. Um, so Andrea now will. Yeah, so so we had, um, we had just like a, a whiteboard set up, sort of collect some information and get some sense of where people might wanna go or, um, and it's good to see that there are some existing networks. I think that's the problem is that loads of people are doing stuff, but we just don't quite know who and where and how to connect up. Um, so hopefully that's something we can do um, here, um, or at least get a better sense of what's going on. So I'm going to share, um, and then we had another idea for, for sort of how we can share information and connection um, and better connect over time. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that right at the end, but um, I'm going to have a whiteboard set up. Um, that everyone should be able to see and um, mm -hmm. add to. 
Um, we just wanted to, um, maybe to take a couple of minutes for everyone. Um, we just had two questions for you. So the first one is just to kind of start with some of your greatest challenges um, and kind of, kind of what you need. Um, basically all you need to do is double click on a sticky and you'll see the cursor come up and you can just type in there. Um, and so we can just take a couple of minutes just to, for people to throw down kind of what they're experiencing and, and what they need. Um, if you see something that somebody's already typing that that is true for you, you don't have to type it again. You can just um, click and hold on one of these stars and just drag it over and just sort of mark that way. Uh, I can see all of you joining us. Yeah, so if you just double click on any of those stickies, you can go ahead and type um, type away kind of what, what your challenges are. Um, yeah, so we'll just give a couple of minutes. And then the second question is kind of what can um, the network do kind of to, to, to support those or what would we like from a network um, coming out of this around this around this topic. So um, yeah, uh, it's exciting to see everyone go. Um, so yes, if you wanna just take a couple of minutes to type away and then we can open it up to some um, verbal discussion as well. Um, oh, Francesca, I'm not sure. Cause, so is, is there anyone else that's having trouble seeing not sure why you wouldn't be able to see. Um, if um, I'll keep my eye on the chat. So okay. if someone's having a hard time um, populating the whiteboard, um, just pop pop it in the in the chat. So the questions are. Um, I'll put the questions in the chat. So, thanks. Um, what are your greatest challenges for growing vegetables from your culture or from yeah the cultures we've been we're talking about um, plants from elsewhere. And we'll clean this up and share it after. So um, so don't be, yeah, don't worry too much if it gets a little crazy. <laughs> it's getting a little crazy already, I can see. Yeah. Um, and then the second question is, what would you like from a network? So if anyone puts their comments, if you can't see the board, I see um, Francesca can't see anything. Um, Helen, just pop it in the chat. There we go, Lucy, I see your comment and I will populate the board. That's brilliant, thanks Carol. Yeah, I'm not, that's, that's really weird. I, I don't know quite why some people would be able to see it and others know. Um, Okay, Lucy, I've got your comment, land availability with water nearby. Everyone just, I have my eye on the chat. Yeah, I think the thing about not duplicating, bringing in existing groups, I think that's um, one of the key things that we don't wanna do. I think I think one of the one of the goals, at least for us, for the call was just to be able to put something out there and have some discussions and find out, ho hoping that people would come um, and talk about what they're doing and and what. So we're not duplicating anything, but we're just bringing things together and learning from others what what's going on. Um, so yeah, I think that's one of the key things that we really wanted from this session, which is totally happening. Um, and someone actually emailed me about Birmingham, like in the 70s, there was a program, which I think might have become the, the, the Nature Trust Garden. Um, I forgot what it was called. Yeah, like in the 70s, they were doing this program where it was, they were growing amaranth and different vegetables from Bangladesh. And um, yeah, it was really exciting to hear some of those stories from, from, from before. Okay, I have the got uh, Okay, I'm just taking from the comments there, trying to figure out which square for it to go in. D, I'm not sure sowing new seeds program, if that's one. Okay. Yeah, I think that's yeah. If there's stuff that people know about that we that we should bring in or know about, that would be great. If you yeah. just 
uh, as well. Yeah. So. Okay. Oh, this is so exciting. Yes, I think that's it. Part of it is trying to figure out who's out there and, um, you know, and also how we link up because it's really wonderful to see today people not only from the UK, but I've seen some people from, I think there was one from Uruguay and uh, Germany. And uh, so it, it is a, a question of how do we, you know, create a network that's uh, it's really quite far afield as well. Yeah, but I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, yeah, I think that the stuff that people would like from the network, there's a lot of overlap. It looks really good. Mm. Yeah, so sharing seeds. I love the idea of visiting people, visiting each other's projects like that. If we could even just make that happen, that would be amazing. Um, yes and knowing which projects to visit yeah you know because if it's uh you know just knowing about eric was just because we were sitting at a table for five minutes yeah tanisha just posted if you go to earth to Earth Organics on Instagram, there are a few videos around seed starting. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I've enjoyed them. Uh, I love the stuff about yeah. co-design, co-design and thinking about how to plan and create spaces. Mm -hmm. There's lots of stuff around that. Like, yeah, there's so much potential to do stuff. So, Andrew, in the last few minutes, did you want to have a little discussion or share circle as a um so well, I think so once i I think once I share circle, the problem with this is that people will lose access to the whiteboards. So I might leave that till the last um till the last minute. Okay. <laughs> um so so I mean, just to say quickly that we did have um we have work working on an online platform that sort of instead of a website or something like that um or another sort of listserv um it's a way to connect um it's called circle and we're using it for the my food community program um and also some of the groups at soil association are using it to sort of do their do their work um partnership work so um we thought that might be a good place to trial um uh where the network could live um, and it's it's a really it makes it really easy to kind of see who's a member of the network to see what people are working on to share to ask questions and get responses um, so that's one potential way that we can um, create the network um, and, and kind of support the the infrastructure that will support the network to to thrive um, uh, and and kind of all of this stuff could ideally like happen easily on there Thinking about sharing, you see sharing, visiting, knowing who who's doing what, who's growing what. Um, we could do a, put a map up on there. Um, I think that'd be really great. Um, share who else is is doing stuff um, and find out about. Yeah, and it would be great to really connect in a more, in a deeper way with a lot of the people on this call. <laughs> yes, this is, this is we're trying to do this all in an hour just to kind of a sense of what's out there, and then yeah. So I know that there's the follow up is is going to be kind of where things really happen. Um, can I ask anyone... a question of people in the group? And again, it's going to be kind of hard because I can't see hands. Uh, you know, we did this as a, a, a quick lunch hour. Circle is an online space, but are people interested in maybe just, you know, throughout the growing season, um, also getting together online for, for more sort of Zoom sessions? because that means people can join from around. So if anyone is interested in maybe, you know, during the growing season as well, um, you know, did you find today 
um, useful for you? Would you like to see more of them? Because you can have a space where we're online and as well a space where we can get together and chat. It would be cool to have semi-regular sessions to check in on how the growing season and our projects in general are going. Yes, yes, yes to chats. Oh, yay. Face-to-face -face session here in London. <laughs> wow, what <Well>, London? <laughs> yes, please. Yes, yes. <laughs> Wales. Yeah. <laughs> Wales. Wales. Yes. We can invite everyone to the Wales. To the Wales. Yes. To the Wales. <laughs> yeah. Wales. I'm in Wales too. That's That'd be amazing. That Wales meet up. Yeah. A, a, com a combination. So that sounds great. Um, you've all signed up so we can. Uh, just have a, a a check in and email addresses and you know see who wants to share about their their projects and then have a chat at one point during this so uh, because that would be good because we're uh, different people and learning from different cultures it would be great to share what they've tried and what's working um and setting the sea because i've seen quite a lot of people are interested in um sharing sea that would be a cool one as well yes yeah, so how about um so how about if I show um circle now? Um I'm just gonna put my email in the chat. Um so basically what's gonna happen after this session is I will email everyone out kind of the this whiteboard, a link to the whiteboard so you can see it, um, and a link to the recording and um and to circle, which I'm gonna I'll show you now. When I show you circle, everyone's gonna get kicked out of the whiteboard. So I just kind of wanted to leave that to the last. Um also in the email, um, I will, um, we just wanted, we wanted to give people the option to opt into the network. So if you want to be part of this kind of ongoing conversation, um, if you just respond to the email that will be coming in your inbox um, probably tomorrow, um, then just say, yes, I'm, I want to join and then we'll add you to the list. And it will, um, yeah, uh, and it will be, we'll be sharing that with, I think Carol from Food Adventure will be part of the, yeah, um, so it'll be kind of co-managed by the two of us. Um, and so I'll show, I'm going to close the whiteboard now and just share you quickly. Show you. So there will be also a link to circles. What we were going to do is create a link on, um, oh, hold on, um, create a link, um, create as its own area on circle um, for this. Um, and I'll just quickly show you. Andrew, do you want to stop the recording in case people want to turn their cameras on and speak? Yes. Recording. Stop.